Okay, so earlier on in the module, we've talked about probe skills. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start working on those probe skills with you at home or in your clinic, wherever you are. And we're gonna focus around the lateral ankle. And that's a very common area that we see in musculoskeletal medicine, lots of patients with ankle sprains. So it's a nice area for you, one, to practice your probe skills, and two, to start looking at some of the anatomy, particularly normal anatomy, uh, which it's really important to get a good understanding of what normal anatomy looks like. Because without that knowledge or that visualization of normal anatomy, it's gonna be very, very hard to pick up any pathology. So the way this is gonna work is at home or in your clinic, you need to have your ultrasound machine and you need to have a model. You can do it on your own um, ankle, that does work, but ideally you'd have a model. Make sure that you choose somebody that you think's got normal anatomy. So probably the younger age groups are probably uh, gonna more likely have uh, better anatomy for you to visualize that the normal uh, fibular structure of the ligaments and the tendons, okay? So we're gonna start off on the lateral ankle. I'm gonna take it really slowly, okay? Because I expect you to be at home following what I'm doing. And I've been teaching this for many, many years and there's lots of common errors that people make with their probe. And I'm gonna include that when we do the lateral ankle and show you how to get out of those uh, errors to ensure that you're seeing a really good image, okay? So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do before we do anything is to check which side of the screen is the left side. So you can see here, if I just push my finger onto the left side, you can see it coming up on the left side of the screen. So this is anterior, okay? So hopefully that helps to orientate. So that's the first thing you need to do. Now, the lateral ankle is a very superficial region. So therefore we need to make sure that our frequency is as high as possible. And this is a really good machine that we're using here and this goes up to 15 uh, megahertz. So increase your frequency. It's quite a superficial region. So I'm gonna start at around you know, one and a half, two centimeters. Let's go for two centimeters. It will depend on the size of your patient. So my model's got quite a small angle. So probably 1.5 to two centimeters. I'm also just, just gonna increase my gain a little bit just to make it less dark. Um, obviously we don't want it too uh, dark because then it's hard to see. And we don't want it too bright as we said earlier because you start to get this sort of background noise um, and we lose that resolution of the image. So we're just gonna reduce that down. We may change that as we go. So the first thing to do is you can feel the fibula with your thumb and you just place the middle of the probe onto the fibula, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do, as many of you will already know from some of our videos on YouTube, is we're gonna find the shark's fin. So you can see this bone here is the fibula and that looks like a shark's fin, I'm sure you'll agree. Behind it, so posteriorly, you can see peroneus brevis, and you can see peroneus longus. If you can't see them, you may be getting an image like this, and if we look what I need to do there, I need to use one of my probe skills, which is to heal the probe to see behind the fibula. If I toe down the probe, you can see, I can see the anterior muscles and the tibia. Now that's really important for you to practice because remember what you're doing is you're just scanning round the shape of the bone. So all I'm doing is keeping the contact with that bone as I heel the probe down and I toe the probe. So just get used to doing that three or four times and start to appreciate how that gives you a different image and helps you to orientate yourself to the anatomy. Now, let's go back to the shark's fin. Now, this is the middle of the screen, and remember, anything that we're scanning, that we're trying to visualize, we are gonna get the best image if we keep that in the middle of the screen. As we've also talked about earlier, this is the bone here, and if I tilt the probe, can you see that actually the bone gets less sharp? And if I tilt the other way, the bone 
gets a bit brighter, but then when I go too far, again, that means that uh, the probe is not parallel to the bone or the beam is not perpendicular to the bone, which means that we're gonna get an isotropy, which is an artifact, which means we're not gonna get a very clear image. So just practicing three or four times, tilting the bone, just to get that bone nice and bright, okay? So you're gonna practice your heel, your toe, and then you're gonna practice your, keeping that in the middle, you're gonna practice your tilting until you get that bone nice and bright. From there, we're going to start moving distally. Now, whenever you um, assess the lateral ankle, often patients have had an inversion injury, and we need to make sure that we look at the bone before we go and look at the ligaments to make sure that we don't miss a fibular fracture. And remember, on the bone, you will see a little cortical break if there's a fracture, okay? And it ultrasounds very good and very sensitive at picking up um, fractures, but remember, we can't see inside the bone. As we slide down, we must keep the tibia in view. Okay, now, what a lot of people do when they slide down is they can't see the tibia and they get confused straight away with where they are, okay? So what you need to do, as we've already practiced, is to tilt the probe forward to try and get the fibula and the tibia as horizontal as possible, okay? So that is where a lot of people go wrong, is that when, as they come down the fibula, they follow the fibula really nicely, but they don't get a nice view of the tibia. So you may just need to slide the probe forward, you certainly need to toe down, and then you can see the tibia, which is a nice round bone there, and the fibula. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, now we've assessed the bone, and remember when you assess the bone, always assess it in transverse, and then you can also practice your spinning to go into a longitudinal section. So you can actually see the fibula really nicely in long section, and that's the tip of the fibula there. You can obviously slide forward and back to assess the long section of the fibula and to look for a fracture. Now, let's slide back. Now, when you rotate back, sometimes you just need to, again, just check that your left is left, and you can see there that the left side is gonna be the tibia. So let's go back, we're gonna keep that joint in the middle, and that's between the tibia and the fibula, okay? Now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna slide down keeping that joint in the middle. And the first ligament we're gonna do, or look for, is the AITFL, which is the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. As we slide down, can you see that I'm starting to lose that tibia a little bit? And remember, what you need to do there is you just need to just tilt the probe forward, so that's toe down, and you can see now that I can see the tibia. So a lot of people, as they slide down, they lose that tibia. You need to make sure that you're getting right on top of the tibia so your probe is parallel to the bone. Now, the next thing you're gonna look for, you keep sliding down, you'll continue to see the fibula, but you can see the tibia has now fallen away and it's been replaced by the lateral corner of the talus, okay? Now the talus, which is here, you know it's the talus because it's got articular cartilage on top, which you can see nicely there. Now, if I've gone down to the talus, we know that we've gone down too distal past the tibia and therefore we'll be moving towards the ATFL, but we don't want that. What we need to do is slide back up and you'll see the, the most distal end of the tibia. Okay, now we're gonna just reduce the depth a little bit. I'm just gonna increase the gain just a little bit to get it a bit brighter. Now, at this point, because of what I've just done by going distal into the talus, I know that this here is the tibia and this is the fibula. This is the most distal end of the tibia. Make sure that you're still healing and towing to ensure that, that um, those bones are nice and parallel. Now, the AITFL is not a horizontal ligament. The way that we teach it 
is that we get you at this point to fishtail the anterior edge of the probe, so that's the left side of the probe on the image, up towards the opposite knee. So we're going to fix the right side of the probe and we're going to move the left side up. Now at that point you may start to see the ligament but you may not and that's nothing to worry about. We don't know at this point exactly what angle the AITFL is going to be but we do know that it's going to be up towards the opposite knee. Okay. Now. What you should be thinking now is that I don't have my bones next to each other and they're not horizontal. So what do I have to do? I need to now toe down the probe, but in the angle that we've just moved to, to try and get these more horizontal. They don't need to be next to each other. This is slightly lower here and that's absolutely fine. At this point, we then need to slide the probe down and we need to look for a fibular pattern between the two bones, always keeping it in the middle. And as I slide down here, I can actually really nicely keeping that in the middle. Now remember to keep something in the middle, you either move the probe forward or back. You can see really nicely here, a nice fibular structure of the AITFL. Okay, so you can see that fibula structure going from the fibula to the tibia. Now, you may be looking at something like that, which is again a nice image, you can see it, but actually by towing down, getting the fibres parallel to the probe, I get a much nicer image. You can see it's nice and thin, it's of uniform echo texture, which the term we use for that is homogenous, and you can see there's no cortical irregularity on the bone, and it looks nice and flat on the top. So this is a completely normal looking AITFL. Now, what's great about ultrasound is that we can now assess this dynamically. So to do that, we use dorsiflexion, and this is where you really need to stabilize the right hand, and then you just move the foot gently into dorsiflexion, and I'm pushing and I'm pushing quite hard. I'm towing down to stay in alignment with those fibers to avoid anisotropy. And you can see that the bone, the tibia and the fibula, despite me moving it into dorsiflexion, is not opening up at all. So that tells me that this joint is nice and tight and gives me a nice indication that there's no injury at the syndesmosis. Obviously, in some cases, you may need further imaging, but it's a nice screening technique for the syndesmosis. Okay, so that is the AITFL. If it was injured, you would lose that fibula pattern and it would look a lot thicker. Now we've done the AITFL, now we're gonna go for the ATFL. Okay, now you need lots of gel here. So you can see I've actually got a lot of gel here. I've got um, my, lots of gel all over my um, fingers, which is good because that means I'm, probe, I, I'm, I'm uh, moving the probe by stabilizing on my fourth and my fifth finger, which particularly with the dynamic tests allows us to keep the stability. So we found the AITFL, which is there. Where do we go next? Well, first of all, we toe down and then we make the probe back, we take the probe back to horizontal. And obviously we know now that the AITFL is not horizontal, so it's important that we appreciate the angle of these ligaments. Now, as we go down, we then start to see the talus again. And there's the talus. And I keep the fibula in view. Now what we do is instead of moving this side of the probe up towards and fishtailing towards the opposite knee, we now move this probe down towards the big toe. So what we do there is we fishtail, which means we keep the right side of the probe on the fibula and there's the talus. Now we move the left side of the probe, angling it towards the big toe until we see the fibular structure of the ATFL. I want to try and get my probe nice and level with that ligament, so I'm going to toe down. And there we can see the attachment of the ATFL uh, coming across onto the talus and onto the fibula. And you can see here, we can even measure this. This is normally about two to three mils. Two to three, so that's three millimeters. 
which gives you a nice idea. But just as important as measuring is that you can see the internal structure of the ligament looks completely normal. It's a nice fibula structure. It's of normal uniform echo texture, that term homogenous again, which generally indicates a normal ligament. Now we can also, I'm just going to turn the gain up a little bit in case you can't see it too well. We can see the ligament here. Now how do we test the ligament dynamically? Well what we do is we just put the, your fingers nice and close to the probe. So we're doing talocrural joint movement. We don't want you pulling down from the forefoot. You may as well just be nice and specific and you just do a bit of plantar flexion here and you can see that that ligament goes nice and tight. So make sure the patient doesn't help you because they like to help, but it doesn't always help. So I'm just going to go into dorsiflexion. Can you see the ligament go lax? And then when I go into plantar flexion, it goes nice and tight and you can add some inversion in there. So dorsiflexion goes floppy, which means it's no longer parallel to the probe and in plantar flexion, it goes nice and tight which means that that's a normal looking ligament. Now some common errors that people make, and we see this a lot in our courses, is that they lose the fibula. So as they start to fishtail this end of the probe towards the big toe, they actually slide too far on the right hand side. And you can see I'm starting to lose the bone there. So you must make sure that you fix this side of the probe onto the lateral malleolus and keep it sti still as you fishtail the other end. So make sure you don't slide off the fibula like that. The other error that people make is that they don't um, move the probe or fishtail the probe enough towards the big toe. So there's our fibula. And what I often see is people get to about that point and they start to panic that the ligament isn't there and you can see there, there is no ligament there. You can see the articular cartilage, so there's no attachment point onto the talus. And all you need to do is just go a little bit further and there's your ligament, okay? So just make sure that when you are fishtailing, if you can't see it, just go a little bit further and that should allow you to see it nicely. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed following me and I hope you found it really useful, but more importantly, I hope you got a really nice, clear visualization of the ligaments. Now, if you didn't, don't worry, because the first time I did this many years ago, I can assure you, I didn't get it first time. What does that mean? It means you've just got to rewind and do it again. And when you think you've got it, you've got to do it another five more times because you really need to get that protocol and that awareness of where these ligaments are and more importantly, what does it look like when you get that perfect image?